This video is about the Budget with Details Details Pivot Table. So I'm on the Details tab of the Budget with Details where you can look up a particular check number, PO number, etc. But there is a great feature called the Details Pivot Table which can be accessed by the blue button the Budget Details Pivot Table, or the tab at the bottom called the Details Pivot Table. When you access the Details Pivot Table, this is just like the Budget Pivot Table, which is located to the right of the Budget tab. There's just different information on the Details Pivot Table. So what comes in here at the bottom is a pre-formatted report that you can work from or the different reports that you can run up here. There are four up here that I'd like to show you that I think might be most helpful. The first one is called the Vendor Name Recap. This particular report will give you a list of every single vendor and how much money has been spent with all of those vendors. So I am going to click on that and run this particular report and then also do a full screen print view to be able to see this report. So as you look down the report, you can see it's alphabetical and it's also all zeros in the budget column. So I'm going to click on the budget column and just remove it from my report holding down the left mouse button where I have a red X and just dropping it out of the report. Again, I can use my best friend, the undo button at the top in Excel and bring that column back. So now I'm able to see the encumbrances, so these would be my outstanding POs, any transactions that have occurred, and then, it, then any total expenses. So you can see that for forms and supply, I have this plus this equal this for the total expenses that have been allocated for this particular vendor for this particular year. So one thing I would caution you, and this is just looking at a sample school, I'm going to click on the vendor name. You could certainly search for a particular vendor name, but if you have any vendor that says blank, uncheck the blank because that's going to skew what you see. So you can see that I filtered out the blank. That blank just skews your numbers, so take the blank out. You can also go back a year and compare expenses between two different vendors. Let's say that you wanted to look at how much you spent on paper from year to year. So you can look at the fiscal year. I'm going to go back to the settings tab. This is year nine where we have refreshed our data. I could change it to year eight and refresh our data and then come back to the details pivot table and compare those two vendors, Mac Papers, and see what has been spent between the two years. So this is an excellent tool to look at your list of vendors and how much you have been spending. That is called the Vendor Name Recap. I also can modify this. So if I wanted to see how much ha have I been spending with uh, each one of these vendors per month, then I can click on just like I can with any pivot table. I can modify this. I'm going to drag down the month, making sure it looks like a T-bar and drop. So you can see with Brame Specialty, a very popular vendor, I'm spending pretty much every single month, in this example we have sample data, but every single month I am allocating uh, POs and spending transactions with Brain Specialty. If I don't want this column, I can just drag it up. It doesn't matter where I put it in column A. 
The next report that I'm going to run is checks written by month. So I can see for each individual month, again, I have sample data, so I only have um, July through December plus January. I could look at one particular month and look at the checks that have been written for that particular month. So here's the vendor name, the journal type, that means accounts payable, the check number, and any kind of comments that go with that, and here's the transaction amount. So very, very handy there. I'm going to filter to bring back everything. Checks written by month. By month means I'm going to put that column first. By check number, the second column um, the first column, the second report here means check number will be the first column here by check number. So it's going to sort it in check number order and then by vendor and then by month. All of these are filterable if I'm looking for a certain vendor, certain check number, etc. Or I want to bring down the vendor number. I'm just going to drag and drop. Notice it's doing a subtotal here. Okay, so if you watched the earlier video on the budget pivot table, you just double click on the column heading and you say, I do not want to subtotal. So that brings up this little pop-up box that says, how do you want to treat subtotals? The default is automatic and that happens because when you start dragging things down, it treats these columns differently depending on where you put them in the report. So now I have my vendor number. I can bring down my PO number or anything else I would like in the report. Same kind of thing here. Double click, choose none, and OK. So here is the PO number that went with this vendor. If I don't want those, I can hit my undo button to take those back up, or I can just drag back up. So that is checks written by check number, the third report up here in our details pivot table. The other report that I think is very handy is to look at your staff development. So notice it says object 312 staff development and what that means is the first column right here, it is already filtered for you on object code 312 and that happens to be staff development. In this particular case, this is just for one location. This would be location 300. This is a school location. So this is the amount of money we can put our full screen print view on that has been spent with staff development for this year so far at this location. So this might look very different for you when you run this report and choose your Object 312 staff development because your codes may be different. You may be looking at a certain PRC or a certain um, larger school location, for instance. And your staff development, you could go back in and again go back to your settings tab, clicking on the settings button, change it to last year by dropping down. refreshing your data, coming back over here, and then that would show you what you spent on staff development last year. All of these buttons give you different reports, but those that I showed you, I think, in my opinion, are the most common that you would use. You cannot hurt these budget pivot tables. You cannot mess them up. So in this example, now that we're looking at our staff development, you can see that we don't have any money in the budget here and we have our transactions and expenses. So we might not want to show budget. I'm just going to drag it out. This might be at the end of the year, so we don't have any outstanding POs. So we could also drag out encumbrances. And then we would do our full screen print view and our print preview just making sure that that last edge of the paper, and I'm going to click on my close print preview, and there's the edge of the paper going down to the far right with the dotted line. 
So I always do a print preview and come back and look at my report to make sure that what I'm trying to print will fit on the paper. My return to regular view will let me run another report, for instance. And you can see now I am able to see that edge of the paper. You cannot hurt anything in a details pivot table. My green button says, show me what this looked like when I first came in. So that is the report that we started with. And then I just clicked on vendor name recap, checks written by month, checks written by check number, and staff development. I could certainly work with this individual report if I liked it. I could run any other report up here. If you are a school location, you will not use these two, the MBEs. Those are really for the finance office. Thank you for watching.